Right, so here's a more complicated looking example. Isn't initially in the form that we want, right? It's not quite in this form f of y times g of y. But remember that our goal with these is to try and get, you know, everything involving y on one side, everything involving x on the other side, and sort of integrate those independently. Um, so we see that with a little bit of manipulation, we can do that, right? So the separation step here is going to be, well, we have y root y squared minus 5 dy. Move this to the other side, we multiply by dx. Sine x, cos x, dx. Okay. So we separate, we integrate. Now, on, uh, on the left, be careful. You might be tempted. You see the y squared minus 5 under the square root. Maybe you're tempted here to do like a secant substitution or, or like a hyperbolic cosine substitution. But remember that the very first thing you should always look for is can you just do a u substitution? And sure, you can. Let that... Um, let this be your u, okay, and then 2y dy would be du, right? So on the left-hand side, we're going to get 1 half times the integral of u to the 1 half du, right? The 1 half comes from here. On the other side, well, you know what, there's, there's a number of options that you can do with this. You can do a u substitution there. Uh, maybe we shouldn't use the same variable, right? Maybe we should call it w or something. Right, we could let w equal to sine x, dw is cos x dx. That's one way to do it. You could also use a trig identity, sine x cos x is half of sine 2x. There's lots of choices, right? Um, so I think, I think in the textbook they, they go with the substitution approach, you know, just for fun, why don't we do it a little bit differently here? We'll get a slightly different looking answer. So we'll use that trig identity, right? So this is going to be 1 half sine 2x. Sure, why don't we can do that? So we get 1 half integral sine 2x dx. And, you know, while we're at it, don't really need those halves on either side. You can get rid of those. So here, power rule says we add 1, we get u to the 3 halves. We divide by the exponent. So 2 thirds u to the 3 over 2. But let's put what u is. u is y squared minus 5, power 3 over 2. On this side, I'm going to get minus 1 half cos 2x plus c. Can do it that way. It's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to, if you want to do it with a substitution, you get a slightly different answer. There's lots of ways you can play around and play that game and, and get an answer. That's the one I went with. Okay. Now, at this point, we want to figure out what that constant is, right? Um, it's not really convenient to solve for y in this particular example. So we say, okay, um, let's put in the initial value. y is equal to minus 3 when x is equal to 0. OK. So let's put those values in and see what we get. Well, on this side, we get 2 thirds times, so that's going to be minus 3 squared minus 5 to the 3 over 2. Put y equal to minus 3, we're going to put x equal to 0. Minus 1 half cos 0 plus c. Okay, let's think that through. So 3 squared is 9, minus 5 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, and then we cube it, we get 8. So this side we have 16 over 3 is equal to minus one half, okay? And so that means that, 
oh, plus C. C is still there. Solve for C. So we add 1 half over here. So 16 over 3 is 32 over 6. We're going to add 3 over 6. We get C is equal to 35 over 6. Right? And that gives us our final answer, if you like. Um, 2 thirds y squared minus 5 to the 3 over 2 is equal to 35 over 6 minus 1 half cos 2x. Right? Um, now, if you wanted to, you could probably multiply both sides by, say, 3 over 2, get rid of that coefficient out front. That would certainly clean things up a little bit for you. Um, so maybe not mandatory, but it's something you could do. Um, you're probably not going to bother solving for y in a situation like this. You could do it, right? Um, but maybe it's not necessary. Uh, you'll notice that your answer looks a little bit different, or my answer here probably looks different from the one in the textbook because I made a different choice here for my technique of integration. Uh, so in particular, I have a different constant because in the textbook at this point, what they're going to have is, is going to be something like 1 half cos squared, right? Or 1 half sine squared. Um, and so, well, that's not quite the same, but they're, they actually are equal up to a constant, right? There's agreement up to a constant. Um, so if you change the way you integrate, well, you're changing the antiderivative over here up to a constant, which is going to change your constant when you put in the initial value, right? But you get an answer that's equivalent to the one in the textbook, and, um, you know, that's fine, right? There's going to be different ways to write down an answer.